it is my honor this morning. Uh, it's always a joy to share uh, missionaries. Chaplain Mike is a missionary to the truckers. And so I have the privilege of working beside this man periodically, whatever I can get out there. As a matter of fact, I'll be out there next Sunday, next Sunday if the truck's out. So I pray that you would give Chaplain Mike your undivided attention as he speaks this morning. And we pray, Father God, we pray this morning that you would bless Chaplain Mike and anoint him. Speak to us through him, Lord. Thank you for Virgil blessing us this morning. And we, we just pray your presence would be strong this morning, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. <clears throat> Virgil, thank you so much for that. That was awesome. That was awesome. Uh, you know, he was, when he was singing, one of the things he brought up is um, he was talking about his shepherd. And uh, that's what we're going to look at this morning. Uh, I've got a question. How many people here <coughs> have taken care of sheep? Any shepherds in here? Anybody that knows a shepherd? Well, I'm sure you all know the shepherd. But has anybody actually herded sheep? You know anything about sheep? Well, guess what? When we get done this morning, you're going to know more about sheep than probably most farmers do that don't take care of sheep. You know, the Bible's interesting. It says that we are all like sheep. We've gone astray. And let me tell you, when, when we're done looking at this, you're going, to, you're going to feel like, man, am I that stupid? <laughs> Because sheep are the most stupidest people in the world. I mean, the most, well, I should, let me rephrase that. The most stupidest animal in the world. So, this is going to be interesting. Um, first of all, what I'm going to do, you guys have a Bible. Uh, if you want to turn to Isaiah 53 6, if not, I'm going to go ahead and read it. I'm sure many of you have heard it before. It says, All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Now, that's a, that's a mouthful of you all right there. And basically, what he's telling us here is that, number one, we've all gone astray. And then, in the next verse, he's basically saying that he's taken Jesus, uh, God's only begotten Son, and laid our iniquity, we're going to see in a minute what all that means, laid our iniquity on him. But first of all, what I want to do is I'm going to... We're going to learn a little bit about sheep. We're going to learn a little bit about us, spiritually, if you will. Because the Bible says all we like, we're all like sheep, so I think we better find out what sheep are all about. Number one, did you know that sheep cannot fight, they cannot run away, and they can't scare away? In other words, uh, somebody gets on our face, we can flex a little bit, we can, we can do something to get them out, get them away from us. Sheep, have, they, they don't know how to scare somebody away. You go up to a sheep and go, boo, he'll run away. He won't go, boo, back. It just doesn't happen. In other words, they are very vulnerable, just like you and me. When a bear approaches, the sheep will gather with others in a pack and run in circles in complete panic, just hoping that the, bee, I mean, that the bear will choose someone else. I mean, that's, that's, that's how they think. Without the, a shepherd to protect them, they will be picked off and eaten one by one, just like you and me. Sheep are directionalists. Let me say that again. Directionalists. Uh, I don't know about you guys, uh, before I got called into full-time ministry, I was in the uh, real estate business for over 23 years. And as a real estate person, we had to go show houses. And I'll tell you, I, I, I felt like a sheep at that point. Um, I wish we would have had GPS back then. It would have been so much easier. Uh, I was one of these guys that I, I could go in the front door, come out the back door, and get lost. I just had no direction at all. Interesting, I found my fit right in here. So again, um, they're directionalists. Sheep are prone to wander. Even if you put them in an absolute perfect environment with everything they need, things like green pastures, still waters, Sooner or later, they will just wander off. If a shepherd doesn't manage them, if he doesn't micromanage them, they will keep them under constant surveillance, they'll wander off and be lost, just like you and me. Now, this is from a person that used to raise sheep. They said, a man that raised sheep said that there are three levels of stupidity in this world. Number one, there's dumb. Number two, there's dumber. And number three, there's sheep. 
That's also a sheep farm. A little bit about sheep. They spend their days eating grass. Hour after hour, they eat everything. Have you ever gone down the road and you'll see a, 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 a piece of uh, land with a lot of grass on it, and you see all these sheep? You wonder, what's, what's up with the sheep? They're like little lawnmowers. Yeah, they'll eat everything. They'll eat, I mean, they're like locusts. They'll, they'll eat that grass like there's nothing left. And what the problem was is way back when, the sheep would eat so much of the grass that they left nothing for the cows. There was a big problem back there. So also, now look what happens next is that sheep also cannot digest all the grass they have eaten until they lie down. But they don't always lie down on their own. So what? The shepherd sometimes has to make them lie down for their own good. Just like you and me. When a shepherd has a lamb that keeps wanting to stray or drift away, before I go, you guys ever see that picture where it's Jesus holding that lamb around his back. Do you ever wonder why he's doing that? Check this out. When a shepherd has a lamb that keeps wanting to stray or drift away, the shepherd would break the lamb's legs and carry the lamb on his neck so that the lamb would get so dependent and close to the shepherd. Just like you and me. You know, we need to be thankful when the Lord breaks us, if you will, spiritually. Because that shows how much he loves us. I mean, most of us here probably have children, have grandchildren. Uh, if you don't discipline your children and your grandchildren, uh, I don't know what's wrong with you. We, we should be. Otherwise, if not, what's going to happen? They're going to wander and they're going to go astray. And now, by the way, if one of your grandchildren or children came in here right now and started grabbing my cord and pulling it off and just doing it crazy, uh, I, I would probably obviously say something, but... I wouldn't feel right taking him like it was my own son and disciplining him and maybe even give him a little whack on the seat of education then. Who would do that? Now let's say it was, now Rudy's kids wouldn't do this because he's trained them right, but if they did, Rudy has the right to discipline them. Why? Because he is their dad or their grandpa, just like us. If you're a born again Christian this morning, if you've accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, then you give God and Jesus the right to discipline you. Now look what happens here. So what happens after the legs break? When its legs are healed, it would always stay close to the shepherd, just as the shepherd wants his sheep to always depend and lean on him, just like you and me. You know, Jesus always wants us to depend and lean on him. You know, I love that one song. I was listening to it on the way up here this morning. And everybody does it. It's called Lean on Me When You're Not Strong. I, I, I would think that's a Christian song. Now, on the very end here, on Isaiah it says, And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. What, you know what the word iniquity means in the Hebrew? It's actually the word guilt and punishment. You know, there are so many people right now in a nut house. You know, oh, by the way, I know Rudy uh, explained a little bit. I'm the uh, I'm a lead chaplain for the Ontario Truck Stop. I deal with truck drivers every day. Yeah, I love those guys, man. They just want to just they go just give it to me. Whatever it is, just give it to me. Give it to me. Down and dirty. That's, I don't want just give it to me good. Now you know what's amazing is a lot of these guys come in, they got a lot of guilt. If you knew their lifestyle, you knew why. It, it, it's a tough life. I, I, I talk to these guys all the time. And they don't they don't walk around with so much guilt. I can remember one time, it's been a while, about a couple years ago, it was a Sunday morning. We have services every night there, by the way, two on Sunday, one at 11 and one at 6. Rudy's been with me for, what, eight years now? He's seen what goes on down there. And I can remember one time, I no sooner I got to the door, I had two guys trying to bust the door down to get in. And, uh, I mean, this one guy was almost in tears. He goes, man, you know what, I, I need for you to pray for me. I go, yeah, what's that? He goes, I fell last night. I'm thinking, I fell down and hurt himself. And he goes, uh, now, things have changed a lot since we've been there. Uh, eight years ago, a prostitution. The prostitutes literally ran that truck stop. But since then, they put up a $40,000 rod iron fence and brought in go armed guards with dogs. So that was in the best story. But this was back when they were running the show. And these poor drivers, I mean, you know, typical guys, you know, we got to be careful. We got to watch ourselves. And here they are, away from their, some of them married, some of them not. And they're just lonely. And some girl comes tat, tat, tat on the door. And they have a little bit of 
couple bucks here, you know, I can take care of your uh, loneliness. So anyway, this guy comes in, he goes, man, you know, he says, you know, I need you to pray for me. I go, what happens? Well, this girl knocked on my door, and I you don't know the rest of the story. Now, the interesting part was the guy was married. And he felt so bad, he said, he literally thought he'd lost his salvation. Now, I'm not going to get into all that, but I said, no, you didn't lose your salvation. But I said, uh, you obviously uh, didn't do what God wants you to do. But you see, the point was, is that he felt guilty. And the Bible says here, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. In other words, our guilt and our punishment. Okay, that was the introduction. Ready? Here we go. I love everybody. You know, I've done quite a few funerals, and it's kind of interesting when you ask people, well, what was their favorite verse? Um, uh, something about a shepherd? Wasn't there, wasn't there something about the Lord is my shepherd, I think, or something? Oh, yeah, I know exactly which one it is. So this is one of the most quoted verses in the Bible. And it's actually a song. It's what they call it a song. I mean, it's a song David wrote. And it starts out, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Now, you know what? This is interesting here. Notice that David said that the Lord is what? My shepherd. I could say that. I could say, no, the Lord is my shepherd. You could say, no, 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 my Lord. The Lord is my shepherd. You could say, no, the Lord is what? You get the point? He's, that's why it's not religion. It's relationship. We have a personal relationship with a living God. Now notice that David didn't say the Lord is a shepherd. No, he said, but David said the Lord is my shepherd. Makes it personal. He says, I do not want. This what it basically means here, you see, is that David has decided not to desire more than what the Lord gives him. I shall not want. You know, that's pretty hard, especially living in the Western world. Uh, I'm a Vietnam vet. I was in Vietnam when I was 18 and a half years old. And I saw those poor people who didn't even have a pot to piss in. I'm not kidding. I remember when I got off that, uh, that plane in Penang, and uh, I'll never forget the stench. Well, what the heck is that smell? They go, oh, that's Papa San burning the poo poo. Like, what? Yeah, they, they dump in a 55 gallon drum, and then Papa San takes it out and burns it. They didn't have flesh toys. So these people over there talk about, I shall not want. They were just happy to get their daily bread. But what, what David's talking about here is he's actually made a decision not to desire more than what the Lord is going to give him. In fact, now in the New Testament, Jesus is called the Good Shepherd in John 10, 11. In the book of Hebrews, he's called the Great Shepherd. In 1 Peter, he's called the Chief Shepherd. In the book of uh, uh, First Peter, again, called the chief shepherd. Now, sheep depend on the shepherd to what? To lead and to protect, just like Jesus does for you and me. If we will allow the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us, we will stay out of more trouble than we can put ourselves into. They de sheep depend on the shepherd to lead also to be warned them of danger. Yeah, remember now, sheep aren't too smart. They need that shepherd to go, hey, sheepy, sheepy, sheepy. Big bad wolves right around the corner there. AKA, huh, say, I like David. <coughs> David, his name means beloved. Uh, I would learn all about David. You know, David was the youngest of eight. Same guy killed Goliath. Probably not much older than a teenager. Loved the Lord. Did he have his problems? Absolutely. I mean, big time. He was a murderer when you think about it. He was an adulteress. But what did God say about David? A man after my own heart. He murdered anybody lately? Gone out on your wife, your girlfriend, whatever? You know, God can still tell, God can still say to you, you are a man after my own heart. Wait a minute. How can that be after I do all that? Because David repented. And that's what God likes. That's what God wants. God wants a repentant heart. So his name means beloved one. And he's the author of actually this, this uh, psalm. But now, the word psalm, you go, what does a psalm mean? It actually means to make music or melody in praise of God. That's what psalms are. Um, is this psalm for everyone? Yes or no? Uh, Technically not. This psalm is really not for everyone. Uh, notice, it doesn't say that the Lord is 
your shepherd. Because it's actually a personal relationship. Until we have a personal relationship with God, this doesn't mean anything to us. I could say, if I wasn't a Christian, I could say, well, the Lord is your shepherd, but he's not mine. Because I've never accepted him as my personal Lord and Savior. You know, one of the things we do, by the way, and I have accepted Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. One thing we do at the chapel, we have permission to do this. There's about 2,000 drivers that come in a day through that chapel, or through that truck stop. We have permission to literally, I, we take our little van out here, and we drive around, and we get out, and we invite the drivers to service. We don't proselytize them, we don't knock on their door, if they're sleeping, if they're on the phone, we, if they give us the not interested thing, we just go on by. Other than that, we stop and invite them to the service. Now, at that point, I can tell them, hey, um, the, Lord, the Lord is really not their shepherd yet until, he's at, until they actually accept him as, a, as his, their Lord and as Savior. And makes that, then it makes them their shepherd. Now, let me read you something here I think that's kind of interesting. This is a guy named Boyce. He said, ministers have used it, this, this psalm, ministers have used it to comfort people who are going through severe personal trials sufferings, illness, or dying. For some, the words of this psalm have been the last they have ever uttered in their life. Interesting. Is God, I want to ask you a question, is God a shepherd in your life? Have you made God a shepherd in your life? You know, I've always said there's two types of Christians, and they'll both get to heaven. And by the way, I love to do this at the chapel, because, I mean, we get... We get people from all walks of life. Uh, I would say 25 to 50 percent of your truck drivers out there don't speak English. I'm not kidding. I'll go up to the truck. Hey, just want to let you know we're having a church service at 11 o'clock Pacific time. Is anybody could be coming from New York or Texas or whatever? And they'll go, uh, huh? I go, where are you from? Uh, Romania, Cuba, Russia. I'm thinking, I. I go, you understand what I'm saying? No. And you wonder, well, how do they get their license? Well, most of us have had our license for so long that we, that we, don't, even, we don't even look at the test anymore. They have it in about every language you can think of. So you don't really have to know how to speak it. You just have to know how to read it. So God was like a shepherd to David, and David was like a sheep to God. By the way, this word Lord here means Yahweh. It's used over 6,400 times. I tell you what, let me just go on to the next verse here, so for the sake of time here. So then he says, he makes me to lie down. I love this. He makes me to lie down. Now see, that's why some people don't want to give their heart to the Lord. Because we're like, you know, I don't want anybody messing with my life. I don't want anybody telling me what to do. But it says, David saying this. This was a king. He was a king. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. See, the Lord as a shepherd knew how to make David rest when he needed rest. He knows how to make you and me rest when we need rest, uh, especially in ministry. I mean, sometimes I think we forget, how, how are you? you're in ministry, sometimes we forget whose ministry it is. Sometimes we think, well, God's given me this ministry, and now it's, thank you, God, I got it from here. No, just the opposite. God's given us this ministry, and it's like, oh, Lord, you've got to be kidding me. Oh, okay, I got this. Now you need to help me. It took me a while just to get it in my thick head. Wow, oh, Lord, you really called me in the ministry. Huh? This is the real thing. I'm working with real people. I'm not just sitting out behind, in front of the, uh, the pulpit listening to the pastor preach. Now you got me behind doing this. That's a big responsibility. And by the way, each one of us have a pulpit. I always tell these truck drivers, you know what? Your pulpit is right behind your truck there. When you get out of that truck, you start sharing with everybody else. I go, I go, my pulpit's pretty small. I got a 53 foot trailer converted into a chapel. I says, you've got the whole United States. The implication is that the sheep doesn't always know what it needs and what is best for itself, so the sheep need help from the shepherd. Just like you and me. It says here, he makes me to lie down in green pastures. See, sheep do not lie down easily, and they will not unless there's four conditions. Now, this is kind of like us. Whenever we talk about the sheep, we need to put our, 
ourself in there. Now look what happened here. This is interesting. These are four things that sheep don't like. We're kind of the same way. Sheep do not lie down easily and will not unless four conditions are met. Number one, because they are timid. You know, are you timid? Are you afraid to show the gospel? You know, I, I'll be honest with you, it's been, it's been a little bit easier for me now. Because this is what I do. Before I had a pulpit, if you will, um, it was kind of weird. It was like, I felt like, I don't know if it's wrong or right, I'm just being honest. I didn't feel like I, I, I had permission. Or like, I didn't have a license to. In other words, I'm not a pastor. You know, I'm just a, I'm just a guy who loves Jesus. You know, I'm an ex drug addict that used to drop Snort enough cocaine as those would believe. I dropped acid like it was candy. I was one of the long haired hippies. Um, that just, I was a mess. And when Christ came into my life, I mean, everybody I knew, my family, were like, he'll get over it. He'll get over it. It's just another thing he's doing. You know, he's going through the hippie thing. He's going through the drug thing. Now they got this Jesus thing. He'll get, he'll get over it. So I was like, oh, who am I to show the gospel? And, but you know what? See, that's what Satan wants. Say what you think. You can't talk to people about Jesus. They know what you were like. In fact, look at you. You're still struggling. You know what? we got to get rid of that. I'm not saying you got to get out there and just start hammering people over the head with the gospel. No. You, when the Holy Spirit tells you to say something, say something. Because you know what? That same Holy Spirit that's telling you to say something is already working on that guy. You know what I'm finding out? I'm, as God is my witness. People are like, they're excited to hear about it. They might get up there and, okay, what's that? What's, 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 Jesus, what? And they like to intimidate you, don't they? And then when you start opening up and sharing the gospel, just be real about it. You know, the Holy Spirit starts dealing with it. I've seen these old big truck drivers, man, start crying. I'm like, wow, Lord, this is real. So anyway, number one, because they are timid, they will not lie down if they are afraid. Number two, because they are, they are social animals, they will not lie down if there is friction among the sheep. Oh, that was interesting. Number three, if flies or parasites trouble them, they will not lie down. And number four, finally, if sheep are anxious about food or hungry, they will not lie down. I know when I got here, they go, do you want to eat now or do you want to eat later? I said, well, I want to eat now. I want to be full. I want to feel good. I don't want to be up here starving to death. We're just like sheep. We gotta have our food. Otherwise, uh, we ain't gonna let, we ain't gonna rest. We're not gonna lie down. Now, what's interesting is where does our rest come from? You know, we all like to go on vacation. You know, we get our rest. Yeah, I get that. I don't know about that. But literally, rest comes because the shepherd has dealt with these four things. He's dealt with the fear in our life. He's dealt with the friction, the flies, the famine. He can do all that. Interesting enough is that the Lord, as a shepherd, knew how to make David rest when he needed it. Just like you and me. Just as a literal shepherd care of his sheep, Jesus literally cares for everything about us. Everything. And you know what? Let me tell you guys, man. We need to be praying more than ever. I mean, are we not living in a crazy world? I mean, see, it's a crazy thing. Every time you turn around, it's like... Hey, just when I thought I heard this was crazy, something else happened. Start praying, man. Start praying. Pray for traveling mercies. Pray for good parking spots. Pray for your family. I'll tell you, I, I went, um, I got the, the privilege of speaking at a, a called the Blue Letter Bible down in uh, uh, Lake Forest. These guys, it's under uh, Firefighters for Christ. Have you ever heard of them? These guys literally give out 10,000 CDs a month. 10,000 a month. You ought to see this place. It's unreal. A millionaire literally built this for these guys and gave it to them. Anyway, I got to share down there, me and my wife. And we live in Riverside. And uh, we're leaving like about pretty early in the morning, getting on that 91 freeway. And we're going down, and all of a sudden we see this car in front of us doing this. We're going, oh, she can't be drunk. It's too early in the morning. I bet she's texting. All of a sudden, I said, you know what? I was driving, so I went and got over in the, in the uh, diamond lane because there was two of us. I just took off. I had to get away from her. All of a sudden, things started piling up, so we're slowing down. Next thing we hear, Arr! as God is my witness, we look over, and there's that girl. She just rear-ended a guy and came this close to our car. I mean, my wife was freaking out. You know, I started thinking, well, honey, we just prayed, didn't we? Lord, give us trouble in this. We need to pray. We need to pray. Now, check this out. I like this. He says, he leads me beside the still waters. 
We're just like sheep, remember? Check this out. If a sheep falls into moving water, they can drown. Kind of like us. What are you going through right now in life? What, what, is your, what is your big well, if you will? And sometimes we fall in that well of whatever that is, man. We're just like, just trying to keep our head above water, right? This is how it happens to sheep. If a sheep falls into moving water, they can drown. Their coats are already heavy. Now, to me, that coat could be the load that you're carrying. What did Jesus say about that? He says, give me your burdens. He says, if a sheep falls into moving water, they can drown. Their coats are already heavy, and their wool rapidly absorbs water, and they can't swim. So they actually fear moving water and are reluctant to drink from a lake or a stream unless the water is still. That's why the Bible says, who? Christ makes you and me to let You want him to. Let him. To lie down in green pastures. He leaves me besides the what? The still waters. Because he knows we don't like turbulent. When life gets turbulent, what do we do? We're going to do one of two things. If you're a Christian this morning, when, you, when the literal poop hits the fan in your life, what are you going to do? Either you're going to run to Christ or you're going to run away from Christ. I see it all the time in the chapel. These guys come in and they're like, I had a guy come in not too long ago. He was a, um, a graduate of a Moody Bible College. Came in drunk, truck driver. I'm like, oh my God, no He come in, I could smell him. He goes, man, you know what? Uh, uh, he kind of looked at me and goes, I'm sorry, man, I, I, I probably shouldn't be here. I said, no, 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 hold on. He's talking about, no, 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 come here. This is where you need to be. So we sit down, we start talking. He started sharing. He was a graduate from Moody uh, College in Chicago. He was called into ministry and ran from God. Ran from God. Now he's a truck driver. I found out, by the way, where all the pastors go when they lose their jobs or when they quit or they get disgusted or whatever. They become truck drivers. I'm not kidding. You wouldn't. Maybe you wouldn't be shocked how many truck drivers are out there that are pastors. So he leaves me beside the still waters. So they actually fear moving water, reluctant to drink from a lake or a stream unless that water is still. And he goes on. Check this out. Did you know that sheep are born followers? That's their nature. Their nature is to follow, not to lead. You know, people tell you, look, man, either lead, follow, or get out of the way. Sheep are followers. That's, just, that's their nature. Check this out. This is, this is how silly it is. Or sad it is, I should say. You know, you heard, you heard stories about sheep how they just kind of uh, fall off cliffs. And you've heard the story, um, the blind leading the blind, uh, or about, uh, about the shepherd. One sheep uh, went off a cliff, the other one went and just followed right after him. True story. Check this out. Um, in 2005 in Turkey, 1,500 sheep walked off the cliff. 400 died. Here's how it worked. The first sheep went over the cliff edge, only to be followed by the whole flock. More than 400 sheep died in the fall. Their bodies cushioned their fall of 1,100 others who followed. We are all like sheep. We need to be careful who we follow. Let me, let me take it one step farther. I, I pray this morning, we're all born again Christians. We've all accepted Jesus Christ, our personal Lord and Savior. He's our shepherd. But God sends us pastors, teachers, to teach us, right? Shepherds, if you will. We need to be careful who we follow. There's a lot of Christians right now that are falling off that cliff. They're following pastors and teachers and they're not teaching the Word of God. They're just telling you, it's, it's okay, man. Just be good. God likes good people, don't you think? There's nothing wrong with being good. Just be good. I'm not going to mention any names, but there's some people out there, man. They're just saying some horrendous stuff. Be careful who you follow. Now check this out. Sometimes a sheep can get turned over on its back. Ever had that happen? Your backslide? You know what backslide literally means? It means you're, it's, it means it's when a, a, an ox an ox locks his legs that will not go forward. That's what it really means. We're not going forward, so what happens? You kind of go backwards, I guess. Anyway, sometimes a sheep can get turned over on its back and not able to get back up. This can actually be fatal. Many of a, many of a sheep's vital bodily functions depend on gravity. 
when a sheep is turned over on its back, the blood drains out of its out of the legs, the stomach can't digest food, and the breathing is blocked. Now, if the shepherd doesn't act quickly, the sheep will die. Just like you and me. You're a born again Christian, something happened in your life. What do the first thing? First thing you do is we always blame God. How many times have you talked to somebody? They go, you know, uh, my grandmother just died, and, and uh, you know what? Uh, it's all God's fault. Well, why do you blame God? Well, you know, uh, uh, God gets blamed for everything, so I guess I'll blame him. It's kind of like it's kind of like uh, Jesus. How he gets, you know, you're you're uh, building something and you uh, take a nail and hit it, you miss it, hit your finger, and well, maybe one of most people you know. Jesus Christ. Have you ever heard anybody on uh, Buddha? <laughs> Muhammad? And on and on and on. No. They all use Jesus. If the shepherd doesn't act quickly, the sheep will die. Just like you and me. You know, you might be here this morning and you're going, man, you know what, Michael? I'm struggling. I am really struggling. And if, if the sheep doesn't, if, if the Lord doesn't act quickly, I'm going to die. Check this out. He restores my soul. Who's going to restore your soul? Jesus is going to restore your soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. The word, he, the, the Hebrew word here for restores my soul can actually also mean he brings us to repentance or conversion. David understood this. Remember? He sinned big time. He strayed away from the island. I mean, I'm sorry, from the fold. He drifted away. Do you guys remember a guy named uh, Bob Zimmerman? You remember Bob Zimmerman? You guys Bob Zimmerman? You know, okay. Some of you guys just nodded because you go, yeah, right. Okay. How about Bob Dylan? Okay, now you know. Okay. Bob, his real name is Bob Zimmerman. He's half Jewish. Uh, he took the uh, stage name Bob Dylan because he liked Dylan Thomas. He's a great poet. Anyway, he did four albums. I would highly recommend listening to it. If you like Bob Dylan, you get past the, the, the groaning, but the words are awesome. And if you notice in his, in his songs, he's talking a lot about drifting away. And uh, we, we can drift away. And again, David understood that. But he also realized that the great shepherd also restores. He restores us to what? What we call an original purity in him. He leads me. This is what they says. He leads me in the paths of righteousness. This is what a guy, this is what the Lord does. This is what a shepherd does. He leads us if he allows him. Next he goes on, I'm almost done here. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they come from me. It's almost like David's talking about like a near death here. I mean, he's walking in the valley of the shadow of death. But he says here, for you are with me. It's like the presence of God eliminates the fear of evil. You're going through something, man, you shake it in your boots. Doesn't Jesus say, fear not, I am with you? Where are you at, Lord? I don't see you. He's here. He says, for you are with me. You are with me. No matter where you're at, he is with us. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. You know what he's talking about here, right? He says, you, you anoint my head with oil. I don't know where you guys fellowship at. Um, you guys ever been anointed with oil? Oil always represents the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is in you. You know, when you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, the third part of the Trinity, God the Holy Spirit, you know, God the Son, God the Holy, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. One God, by the way, three persons. Don't let people try to confuse you. No, 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 you, you just said it. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. So there's three gods. No, 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 one God. We only serve one God. We're monotheistic, right? Mono means one. We only worship one God. So then I'm going to close with this. Goodness shall follow us. Goodness shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord 
forever. Goodness and mercy shall follow me. You know, the word goodness means happiness, prosperity, being well. He tells us it's going to follow us all the days of our life. And I love this part here. Mercy. The word mercy, by the way, means favor. You know, I'm in the middle of a truck stop. I'm in, I'm in, I'm in a place where there's a lot of non-believers. I would, I would almost venture to say a third of our truck drivers are Muslims. There's a part within the truck stop there where certain, certain ethnic groups, if you will, will uh, congregate. Congregate. Thank you. <laughs> you know the old saying, "Birds of a feather flock together." Okay, it's no different. You ever gone to the, you ever gone to a lake, and you'll see different species of, of uh, birds, right? And all these birds are together here, and all these birds. That's just the, even birds are that way. That's just our nature. I love this though. Who loves them? That's what I like about the truck stop too. We get every single nationality in that chapel, all of them. And you know what? We're all one in there. We don't mess with the craziness that goes on outside that chapel. But you, so anyway, I'm always praying for favor because I go, Lord, you got to give me favor here. Not everybody, not everybody's kind of here. There's a lot of people that are, but there's a lot that's not. And you know how they let us know? You know, a lot of truck drivers. By the way, if you're by the road and you're in a truck stop and you see a big container that's yellow. Don't pick it up. Or what they'll do sometimes to let us know that we don't like you here, they'll take it and leave it on my front door at my chapel. So I gotta get my rubber gloves on and pick it up and go throw it in the truck. This is okay, that's all right. But so I'm always praying, Lord, give me favor with man. And you know God will do that? Did you know the Bible even says that that if you're a Christian and you're in your job or, or your family, that literally your family and your job will be blessed because you're a Christian? Remember remember uh, uh, Jacob and when he took off and he ended up staying with Laban and he ended up getting Rachel, and that was a, a cool story. But remember, Laban was like, wow, since you've been here, man, God's been blessing me. You know, God blesses people that you work with because you're a Christian there. I mean, it's amazing. It's crazy. It's awesome. It's awesome. So pray for favor, and God will give it to you. So my question, I'm done. My question is, I guess, is uh, have you made Jesus Lord in your life? You know, I never finished this one thought. Remember I was saying that uh, there's two types of Christians. They're both saved. They're both going to heaven. Um, but you get a Christian that accepts Jesus Christ as a personal Lord and Savior, and they're going to heaven because we're saved by grace, not by works. They, they got saved; they did nothing after that. I mean, literally nothing. Thank you, Jesus. Appreciate it. Uh, see you in heaven. You know, the Bible says, "Call the name of the Lord, and you shall be saved." And it's, it's basically that's it. That's the one Christian. Then you got the other Christian that has accepted Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, and now they made Christ Lord of their life. So there's a difference between being a Christian and then having be, making Jesus Lord of your life. He's not going to force you to do His will. He wants us to do His will. Remember, remember that model prayer that Jesus gave us. In that model prayer, He said that when we pray, our our prayers to be Thy will, not my will. Thy will. The word to will, by the way, means desire. Thy will, Thy desire, be done on earth as it is in heaven. And I'm thinking, man, that's a sweet deal. So if I follow, please see, if I follow God, and I know God loves me, even though I kind of want to do this, let me step back a little bit and pray to see what God wants me to do. Because I know he has the best for me. I think I'll go with his, his ideas. Now. And I'll tell you, if you do that, you'll save yourself a lot of headaches. Pass me. I know. Let's pray. Lord, we just come before you, Father Lord, we thank you, Lord, for this beautiful day you've given us, Lord. Father, I thank you for this group of guys that are here, Lord. I pray, Lord, Father, that we will make you our shepherd. Just like you. We just realize how stupid sheep are. And here's the silly part, Lord, if you will, is that you said we're all like sheep. Wow. You didn't say we're all like eagles. Or we're all like turkeys. You used the sheep as an analogy. Because you know how stubborn they are. You know how much they need a shepherd. And that's us. We need a shepherd. 
So I just pray this morning, Lord, that each one of us, we get back in our cars, we'll think about this, and we'll go, you know what, Lord, as of right now, from my heart to my lips to your ears, I am going to pray, thy will, thy desire be done on earth where I am going to spend the rest of my life in heaven as it is, as you want it to be. Here, a thousand years, Lord. A thousand years here on earth is like one day in heaven. But Lord, I don't know. I just can't wait. I'm tired. I really am. I'm tired. But Lord, I'll, I'll work until you say enough is enough and you take me home. And Lord, I pray the same thing for these guys. Lord, for that gentleman that got up here and sang. Father, I could just, number one, the eyes, the windows of the soul, you can look at his eyes and see, man, to see Jesus in him. And you can hear it in his voice. And, and I can tell he wants to go out praising you and going out and sharing your love to as many people as, as, as he can. And Lord, I pray, Lord, you give him that strength. Like all of us, we're getting up there. Psalms 90, 10, the average person is going to be 70, maybe 80. I would venture he's three quarters of that more done with his life, just like I am. So Lord, have us go out with a bang, doing what you've called us to do. I ask you to bless every one of us here. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody say. Amen. Amen. Amen.